Welcome back to CBS This Morning. There's been a huge spike in Internet scams targeting Americans. The FBI says 2020 was a record year with almost 800,000 complaints. This year, investigators expect around a million. The financial losses last year totaled more than $4 billion, and the scams are getting much more sophisticated. Our consumer investigative correspondent Anna Werner visited a small business in Maine that was targeted by fraudsters. Anna, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. And this is a story that these business owners wanted to tell to warn others, because they say the damage to small businesses can not only hurt that business, but the employees who rely on it even the local economy. On any lake in Maine, chances are you'll see Sam Merriam's boat docks lining the shore. A lot of docks. There's a lot of docks. <laughs> His company, Great Northern Docks, custom builds the platforms and parts, employing 20 people. But he says exactly he came close to losing it mean. all last October when the company's accountant went online to send out the weekly payroll from KeyBank. It was like a bombshell. It was unthinkable what happened. Accountant Shelley Brown says she'd just gotten a new computer the day before, and in order to send out the payroll, she searched the Internet for the bank's payroll website called Key Navigator and logged on. Was it pretty much the first site that came up? Yes. You'd put in your same username, password. Once on the site, she says, a message said it was undergoing system maintenance. But then her phone rang, showing Key Bank on the caller ID. Telling me again that the system was under maintenance and they should have it fixed within a few hours. Later that day, she checked the site again and got a second phone call. And they said, well, we're not going to be able to get it done today, but you should be able to be up and running by morning. Seems totally normal. Yes. But the next morning, she had an email from the bank. Which said that we had overdrawn our account. We never overdraw funds, ever. So I knew something was up at that point. Brown says she immediately logged onto the bank's website from her home computer and saw withdrawal after withdrawal. $4,000, $15,000, When you realized that, sick. Sick to my stomach. And then she had to tell her boss, Miriam. And she said, something's very wrong. I've got all these uh, transactions that have happened, and I can't explain them. 68 transactions in all. It just felt devastating. I don't know how else to say it. $249,000 gone. It was totally shocking, shocking. And I think of Sam as a brother and his reason for wanting me to be in the role I was in, because he could trust me. You feel like you let somebody down. That's well, my job. Miriam's company fell victim to Internet scammers, who the FBI says are increasingly targeting American businesses. Cyber Division Unit Chief so, Donna Gregory. On the business side, there's a lot more money. Uh, it's a, a bigger bang for the buck. You're going to get, you know, six figures or more. Those scammers set up fraudulent sites that can look identical to the real ones, like the key bank site Miriam's bookkeeper logged on to. A cybersecurity firm he hired found it was a fraudulent site that behaved just like the genuine site. And the people who called her? The crooks themselves, with a faked caller ID that said key bank. The criminals are very good at this. Um, they've actually really perfected this over time. It's a business. But Miriam says he didn't originally think he'd lose the whole quarter of a million dollars. He says his contract with KeyBank called for it not to allow payouts greater than $25,000 per week. But he says the bank later told him it wasn't responsible. And I said, so you're saying I'm on my own? He said, unfortunately, yes. Key Bank would not comment on Miriam's case, but it confirmed a trend of spoofed websites and said it has identified and helped to take down approximately 150 of those fake sites. The bank says it takes steps to alert clients so they can avoid becoming a victim of fraud and works directly with clients to recover any losses that they can. But Miriam and Brown say in their case, the bank's security protocols failed. Um, I feel that Key Bank really let us down. You're mad. I am mad. I think the bank should be protecting us as customers, consumers, and they didn't. 
Miriam says he was fortunate enough to sustain the loss and keep his employees in their jobs, but he's speaking out to warn others. I feel like I have a moral obligation to, uh, as a survivor, I have a moral obligation to warn other business owners. Well, so initially, about 66000 of that roughly $250,000 was recovered by the bank. It hadn't gone out yet. But Miriam believed the bank should make up the rest, so he hired a lawyer to negotiate. Now, they had previously told us they were not making much progress, but since we reached out to Key Bank this week, that has changed. The matter has quickly been settled, Yay. we're told. Yay. And if you've had this happen with Key Bank or any others, we want to hear from you. Email us at consumer at cbsnews.com. Please tell us your story. Well, Anna's very good, favorite viewers. <laughs> yeah. Anna at the same time said, do, do they get the money? She goes, stay tuned. <laughs> she did a little shoulder wiggle, stay tuned. Anna, quickly, wow, I, Anna. I got confused. When she signed into that, that, that site looked so real. Yeah. Um, but were they actually taking her information? Is that what was happening? And the so phone the, call was what? So the scammers are taking the information, and then they take those credentials and go and use them on the real site at the same time that they're talking to her and getting her stuff, yes. right? So it's like a two-hand operation. The phone calls were a stalling tactic right. well, so that you don't go to the real bank site yes. and reach out to your real bank and call the real bank and say, what's going on with the website? At which point your real bank would say, what are you talking about? Right. 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 Yes. Because she everything. hadn't given any information on the phone. No. She had already they're logged calling it all in. to reassure you. Yeah. It's a very sophisticated, what the FBI calls social engineering technique. It is, yeah. it is my nightmare when I get on sites and think about that, especially with a bank. So and, I'm glad they're and, telling and the story. Read very the glad. URL yeah. address very carefully. Very carefully. Yes. Yeah. Thank you.